Hello friends, good afternoon. Welcome to CC Adjusat Live Lectures. Dear friends, today's topic for lecture is rural development and in this topic we will be discussing concepts and theories related to rural, rural development and approaches to achieve rural development in a significant way. To take this lecture, we have our subject expert, Professor R.B. Singh with us. Dr. Singh is the head department of geography, Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. He is also the vice president of international geographical union so without wasting a time i would like to welcome dr singh to our show and request him to begin his lecture welcome sir thank sir. you asmita ji dear viewers today we are going to discuss a very important topic for our country and even for the globe rural development concept theories and approaches in this whole lecture, I would like to bring before you historical development of rural development, definition, various approaches uh, through times and space, and then role of vital sectors like agriculture, social services contributing towards rural development. Globally speaking, you know, major people, a lot of still a very substantial proportion of people live in rural areas. Almost 2 billion poor people live in rural areas. Sometime people used to say rural areas are underdeveloped, urban areas are developed. But this statement is more appropriate for OECD countries, you can say like Japan or Korea, but not for Asia, Africa or Latin America. Three quarters of the world's two billion poor live in rural areas. Generally, you know, we uh, poor people means generally we relate with the low income, but it is something more than that. Poor people lack access to nutritional food, clean water, educational opportunity, health services and various other you know basic needs. Poverty also has a negative role in social relations and it puts human lives at risk through various environmental hazards. You know in recent years we are getting extreme events, we are getting acceleration of extreme events due to the various anthropogenic activity. It is a combination of natural forces and and the human driving forces. In a agrarian country including India, rural development is a prime in importance. There is no sustainable development without rural development. Through this diagram, I would like to bring before you importance of agriculture sector in rural development. You can see here 1.4 billion people engaged in agriculture in comparison of 400 million entrepreneurs, 430 million unemployed, 576 million older people, 19 billion people too young to work and 1.7 billion they are engaged in services. So, you can understand from your perception the type of issue we have with rural development. Now, you can see this the income inequality through this diagram. This is a World Economic Forum diagram and you can see 70 words 1 percent of the human population have 
only 3 percent of the total wealth. So, you can find regional disparities, special in inequalities, special inequalities between rural and urban areas. On the other hand, you can see 0.7 percent of the population, they have 45.2 percent of the total wealth. So, it is a very unbalanced distribution of wealth in our world. In developing countries, you can find more disparities, more inequalities. One example here I would like to take from you know development of rural India, how we started journey from village ecology to urban regional study and such urban regional study may be considered more globalized now. I would like to remind you here the statement given by our father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi ji that soul of India live in villages. Village was considered a self-sufficient unit. Every village, particularly in northern India, I would like to tell you, one can see a typical Jajmani system, socio-economic interaction among village community, where one community getting resources from other community, providing services, and in this way our whole village society was moving. Then you know we came era of regional planning, regional development to micro level village study. Now our focus is more towards village, village and their association, their organizations like farmers are becoming a very important you know point of rural development. And more recently one can see the impact of globalization. We have globalization of capital, but not globalization of labor. What we need? Balance regional development through globalization of capital and globalization of labor. Two more focus is being given on community perception approach. How community participation, people's participation can, can be ensured in our development process. And for that, we have to prepare or design participatory project, Partic uh, we have to diagnose participatory projects and we have to develop pa participatory project. It is better before moving for different theories, it is better to understand or improve our understanding about what is rural development. I quote Chambers, he was very pioneer, you know, and his very important statement, putting people first. I quote, rural development is a strategy to enable a specific group of people, poor rural women and men, to gain for themselves and their children more of what they want and need. The group includes a small scale farmers, tenants and the landless." Unquote. I would like to quote another, a process leading to sustainable improvement in the quality of life of rural people, especially the poor. Rural poor is not a phenomenon of the past in third world country third world country of you know Asia, Africa or Latin America. According to World Bank, I would like to quote here 1997, sustainable rural development can make a powerful contribution to four critical goals, poverty reduction, wider share growth, household, national and global food security and sustainable natural resource management. Unquote. 
Now it is time here to understand the evolution of economic development theories, particularly starting from 16th century, pre classical theory, growth model, 16th to late 18th century, mainly focusing on you know pre industrialization stage. Then 77, uh, 1776 to 1870, you know, classical economy and it the industrialization, you know, came in a very powerful way. Then we know we have the more new classical economies, 1870 to 1930. Then came era of Keynesian economies, 1930 to 1970, more, you know, focusing on the role of uh, uh, public sectors also involving the private and then came era of the Marxist you know economies during the 50s or uh, 70s in the 1970 uh, 60s I would like to especially mention. Subsequently we had development economies between 1940 to 1990 and more focus was given one on the basic needs strategy, improving the basic strategy of the people, take into consideration of education, health, some of the priority areas, several, uh, I would like to remind here during the fourth five year plan, a several a special areas program were implemented in our own country like India, you know, uh, drought prone areas program desert development program, flood prone areas program, tribal development uh, uh, program, these all came that time. And then 1990 uh, onwards, you know, this was a more important era of globalization, liberalization, privatization, you can say like a new liberalism. So, very broadly speaking here, I would like to bring before you four important areas of concern for rural development. And few questions always resound in my mind. What is happening to poverty? What is happening to unemployment? What is happening to socioeconomic inequality? What is happening to regional disparities? If these four are declining at a highest level, I can say this is the period for development for any region or any areas for any state or any region, these four are the key, you know, concern of rural development. Rationale for rural development, it is, um, uh, it emerged particularly, you know, due to the urban bias of development and consequent poverty and unemployment. Because, you know, if you will ask me to identify the two very important areas here, uh, I would like to say for rural development, we have to improve prosperity of the people and prosperity of the place. Here I would like to quote World Development Report 1990. They rightly observe, I quote, poverty as measured by low income tend to be at its worst in rural areas. So, poverty is not phenomena of the past in our country. Even allowing for the often substantial differences in cost of living between town and countryside. The problems of malnutrition, lack of education, low life expectancy and substandard housing are also as the rule more served in severe in rural areas. These are the critical you know, issues for the rural areas. And so that is why, but we have a very complex nature of poverty, what it is called the syndrome of collective poverty. Uh, it is not like a North India or the South India or the East India, South India, North Iraq or South Iraq, North Italy or the South Italy, but we have like in our country, we have a very complex nature of poverty 
you can get the every district has a pocket of poverty and pocket of prosperity. So, this we I would like to use the word islands of poverty and island of prosperity you can find in our country. And some sometime people used to say that rural areas are all backward area, but I, I would like to say 20 percent of the rural areas are better than the 20 percent of the urban areas of our country. Food crisis has been a very, very important widening the gap between the growth of food production and population growth, especially in Asia, African region. You know, uh, after largest drought affected people, you know, before Sahelian, uh, you know, uh, lived, lived in India, but now they in Africa, you know, we are getting the more drought affected people after the Sahelian drought. The supply oriented policies were made, uh, more likely to ch bring the challenges before us. It challenges to whom? To, to village development program, the ground for successful production, orientation in agriculture had already been prepared in mid 1960s and you might you will remember a green revolution came into existence that time. And that time it was considered agricultural growth through green revolution, particularly in Punjab, Haryana, western Uttar Pradesh, we achieved a very substantial increase in food production. But after few years, we found that the few district, you know, like Ludhiana district regarded the highest productivity of some of the crops, also regarded highest micronutrient deficiency in the soil. You can find in Haryana or Punjab due to the, you know, green revolution was achieved due to irrigation, you know, uh, plant protection uh, chemicals like fertilizers, pesticides, all the seeds, new variety of seeds came into existence. And so, you can find the very high nitrate concentration in the ground water also. And many areas it is not possible to use directly for drinking purposes. You can see here food production, this diagram in different agroclimatic zones in highland area, lowland areas, the traditional methods, still many countries in Asia, you can find the traditional cultivation practices. People are uh, practicing monoculture, wheat in the Ravi time and the, uh, rice is dominant crop in the uh, Kharif uh, time. And due to irrigation, facility provided by the government and provided, you know, adopted by the people. Now, you can find we are moving towards the more monoculture, not, you know, a very comprehensive uh, multiple uh, development strategy, rural development strategy. And so, that is why diversification of rural economy is very, very important by bringing diversification in the field of agriculture. Origin of rural development, you know, international labor organization, they started a very important initiative, what it is known as basic needs strategy. Because how we can use, uh, we can provide, we can uh, fulfill basic needs, satisfy the basic need of the people living in rural areas. Same time, Asian Development Banks, World Development Reports highlighted the problem of rural unemployment and related poverty problems. But main aim was to remove hunger. Many country adopted imported food from outside and growth oriented a strategy adopted in agriculture sector and it brought success in some areas, but again it brought successes 
only in a very uh, a small proportion of our country. I would like to give you an example of India. And one can see a very positive relationship between um, irrigation availability and food production. Food production means the more you know uh, satisfying uh, food to the people uh, in order to improve and we are able to improve uh, poverty level. But uh, still poverty is not phenomenon of the past. You know during the fourth five year plan here I would like to mention in, uh, in India we adopted basic needs minimum needs program. I would like to use the word minimum needs program in the field of education, health services, primary health center, basic uh, uh, sub centers were uh, established in all over the country, but uh, still we have a big gap in rural area. But despite substantial and impressive increase in the food and overall agricultural output, uh, still it did not reach to the all places. So, I, in the beginning I mentioned that we need pro improving prosperity of the people and prosperity of the place, prosperity of the region. So, we got also uh, this disparity, regional disparity, a very highest uh, proportion of regional disparity one can see. Here I would like to bring before you one example. We have like one region like Punjab and Haryana where per capita income is very high, but very little natural resources. On the other hand, we have states like Chhattisgarh, uh, Jharkhand, Odisha, where they have more resources, but per capita income is very low. We have another group of states like Maharashtra, Gujarat where you know one can see per capita income is also high and also the uh, resources, they have some resources. So, we have a very complex nature of regional structure in our country. But Chinese success in, a relevate, in eliminating poverty and unemployment through a system of communes attracted attention at the same time to the policy makers all over the world. Government and agency started a search of various alternative, development alternative, it is called the development alternative. This led to many reformist experiments in rural development in different part of the world. See, you can see here the rural life in uh, India, how the people they are practicing the uh, school mid day meal, a school, the children. Uh, in any village you can find the such type of the uh, living pattern. Then you know during the 70s came era of integrated rural development. It is called IRDP, integrated Mara initiated a rural development at international level, particularly for removing poverty, combating poverty. Two sides of debate came into existence here, a grow based agri economist with new classical writings and then the social scientist, the social base improving the social base focusing on more on also on uh, uh, the social sectors like health, education, these were the very, very important area. The current debate on the high and low points of rural development must be seen in the wider context of permanent economic crisis with which the poor countries are fighting. And I would like to summarize here uh, uh, IRDP or integrated rural development, what type of anybody uh, raise a question, what type of integration we need? We need a special integration means village may be considered a, uh, a revenue boundary. So, village may be one special unit, block, district, province, then country. So, such type of integration. Then we had sectoral integration. 
sectoral means starting from agriculture, horticulture, industry, variety of other sectors, social infrastructure sectors. Then sectional, a particular weaker section of society and so that is why here I would like to put before you one key words welfare schemes. Welfare schemes came in, into existence and you know if you will ask me to identify the three critical factors for rural development, I would like to tell we have to strengthen the productive system, we have to strengthen the infrastructure and we have to also move bring some welfare schemes. Because since centuries many people weaker section of society they are not able to get participate in development process and so through the welfare schemes they are able to uh, you know we will be able to improve their status. Here I would like to differentiate rural and then two word I would like to take. Rural is the place where ongoing looking the interaction particularly the co-production. Agriculture is a more dominant production forces, forestry maybe, fishing, hunting, rural tourism, rural sports, all living in the countryside area. Development is not purely on economic phenomena. Development cannot be uh, economic growth may be the one very important aspects of development, but not the everything. Sometimes people uh, uh, can consider the development and uh, economy, uh, economic growth as an interchangeable word. It is not an interchangeable word. But we have to see multidimensional structure process involving reorganization and reorientation of entire economic and social system. Here I would like to bring objective of rural development. As I already mentioned, development is a process of improving the quality of all human lives with three equally important objectives, raising people, living as level, increasing people's freedom to choose, creating condition conducive to the growth. So four points always resound in my mind, economic growth, social justice, modernization and socio-economic transformation. These are the four important principles of rural development. This concept, rural development is a concept, is a phenomena, a strategy, a discipline. So we, you see the, we have the master program of rural development also in many university. As a concept, it denotes overall development of rural areas with a view to improving quality of life of rural people. In this sense, it is comp a comprehensive and multidimensional comp uh, complex uh, concept encompasses the development of agriculture and allied activity, village and cottage industry and crafts, socio-economic infrastructure, community services and facility and above all the human resource development in rural area. So as a phenomena, it is the result of interaction between various physical, technological, economic, socio-cultural and institutional factors. As a strategy, it is designed to improve the economic and social well-being of a specific group of people and a specific group means the rural poor. As a discipline, it is a multidisciplinary in nature representing an intersection of agricultural, social, behavioral, engineering and management sciences. I would like to bring before you now the components of rural development. These are very, very important. If you can understand these components, you will be able to understand the whole concept and theories of rural development. First, I would like to bring geographical components. Geographical means spatial. A spatial it denotes integrating from village 
too distinct, too a state, temporal, time. It may be the seasonal also, you know, managing rural area on seasonal basis and then also evaluating the past, uh, understanding present and the preparing a strategy for the future. And then resource base, all you know identifying resource base of our uh, rural region or rural areas. So, geographically speaking, a space, time and resource. Economically, economically speaking, here I would like to bring three component, macro, micro and planning. Micro base may be agriculture, industry and tertiary. Micro, you know, dealing with production, distribution, consumption, welfare schemes and planning again centralized planning and decentralized planning. Then I would like to bring here social component. In this includes social institutions, social infrastructure, gender is a very important aspects of rural development. Then cultural, human resource development, local knowledge, talent, material resources, then value system of society. Political, this includes administrative units, variety of institutions including Panchayati Raj institutions. After 73rd and 74th amendment of our Indian constitution, we are moving towards decentralized rural development and decision making and even panchayats and local self governments are becoming independent. Uh, economically more and more powerful and people's participation ultimately. We have to remove the frustration of the message. We have to strengthen uh, will power of the people through people's participation. And so I used to say people's participation means is not participation by the people but the participation by government. But where participation? Participation by government in people's program. That is the that should be the our uh, you know modern uh, people's participation. Goals of rural development: economic, social self determination, keeping in account the cultural independence, agriculture, forestry, and fishery that are diversified and appropriate to the location and do not deplete the resources that is very, very important. So, we have to move for development without destruction, eco development, a multi sectoral approach, efficient physical and social infrastructure, decentralized craft and a small scale industrial production. And if I am taking the uh, 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 this industrialization, rural industrialization, I would like to use the word the rural industrialization. Rural industrialization means also the rural artisans, you know this uh, caste based the uh, many people experiencing the variety of uh, their activity, it, they require the training, they require the some financial assistant in order to improve their status. So, rural artisans, a small scale industries, a small scale village and cottage industries, you know, then major industries, even sugar and variety of other, you know. Through this uh, table, I would like to bring before you the whole, you know, scenarios of rural development and changing perception of actually de development. I would like to take here, examine the period. I would like to examine the perspectives and then the meaning of development. 1800 largely classical economy, more you know uh, not a systematic a strategy, remedy for progress, looking for any initiative which may improve the status of the rural poor. 1870 
late in industrialized economy, you know, on industrialization was the main focus. 1850, the colonial economy, trusteeship was the most important concept, but resource management was also uh, one of the criteria. 1940, development economies, growth, industrialization, 50, you know, modernization theory, you know, modernization is a very, very important for our uh, country. And many, because in our whole society from traditional, traditional to modernization in between, you know, India experienced the Sanskritization, you know, a very famous sociologist, M. S. Srinivas, he used the word Sanskritization. Uh, you can find between the traditional society and modernization. But in, you know, many places, they move from traditional to modernization without passing through the Sanskritization. And so, you can find the lot of the conflict and uh, in many areas of northeast, you can see uh, such type of the dependency theory, accumulation, national and autocentric. 70 came the era of looking, searching for alternatives and human flourishing. 80, 90, uh, the, uh, came era of human development where uh, enlargement of people's choices came into existence. New liberalism during the 1980s where the economic growth, structural reforms, deregulation, opening of economy. Uh, was started different part of the world. 1990 particularly more specifically one can say the phase of globalization, liberalization and privatization and disaster management and variety of other you know uh, issues came into existence. And 2000 you know I would like to MDG, Millennium Development Goals, where food, education, uh, eradication of poverty, health, variety of other issues came to, a structural reform for human welfare approach was implemented. Approaches of rural development, 60s was totally associated with the modernization emphasizing on technology transfer, 70s with large scale state development intervention and IRDP, Integrated Rural Development Program, 80s associated with the market liberalization attempts to roll back the state, 90s are characterized as being a strongly process focus on participation, empowerment, livelihood opportunity, diversifying the rural economy actually. This page may be considered for diversifying rural economy. You can see this the how a state brought in one example here I would like to bring the Indira Gandhi Canal project, boon for the dry rural region of Rajasthan. Those who have visited earlier before the canal came in that area and now if you will visit after canal, introduction of the canal irrigation, very significant change you can find changes in the soil quality, changes in the vegetation, changes in production, even highest productivity of the sum of the crops were achieved there, you know, due to the uh, water. 2000 have a focus on poverty eradication, reinvention uh, of a small holder agriculture, sustainable farming system, location of producers within global uh, value chain. However, illis and bigs caution that rural policy have not evolved in such a neat, linear and schematic manner and that I quote, there are leads and lags in the transmission of new ideas across a space and time, unquote. And I would like to sum up the important you know, table here I would like to discuss, you know, which provides an chronology of changing thinking and approach it alternatively uh, internationally to 
development and more specifically the rural development. Like you see the 50, modernization, dual economic community development, you know, modernization theory hold that a small scale subsistence sector had little potential to improve productivity and so that is why, you know, large scale modernization. But here I would like to tell that same time Asian drama, a very important contribution came and Mirdal, you know, uh, focusing on intermediate technology. I would like to he he use the word in many countries where uh, population, uh, we have a very high concentration of population, we have to move towards selective modernization. We cannot go for a very massive, you know, technological development. Dual economy we adopted like mixed, you know, community development program, uh, you know, approaches already came into existence, you know, during the 50s you can see this modernization of agriculture. We need certain modernization in irrigation sector, but not in every area because we have so many unemployed people in our country and employment, giving employment is a very, very important contribution towards rural development. So, you can see this the how people are using in farm, uh, using the uh, tractors and other. 60, the, uh, we achieved the green revolution due to the technology transfer, large scale input, but you know we uh, got a lot of problems, environmental implications of such green revolution and uh, you know rice, rice generally West Bengali, uh, Andhra, these are the state Bihar more popular for rice cultivation, but highest productivity of rice we achieved in Punjab. But you see, these uh, uh, rice in Punjab is a more input oriented, more intensive, you know, use of fertilizers and pesticides. So, you are eating uh, uh, not the rice, you are eating also the fertilizer. On the other hand, in traditional area, they are growing per capita production is less, but it is maybe you can say the green rice, natural rice. Agricultural extension. Uh, program uh, came into existence, the changing perception of rural people as a rational, uh, rational make managers to risk and change. So, a small farmer development agency, marginal farmers, focusing on agricultural laborers all came into existence because they were at risk due to several natural disasters. 70s, redistribution came, we realize even our own country, I would like to uh, exam give the example that we achieved a lot, a very substantial high rate of growth of in agriculture, but it is not reaching to the every section of society. So, redistribution with growth, promotion of basic needs approach, you know, new style for focusing on nutrition, health, education, then you know, redistribution of growth here, I would like to quote the World Bank. It is now clear that more than a decade of rapid growth in underdeveloped countries has been of little or no benefit to perhaps a third of their population is still living in poverty. 70s large scale integrated rural development program came into existence. A particularly large scale complex state led top down blueprint approaches were presented before the people, many technocratic and remote from the people's needs, limits to growth and world conservation strategy also came into existence same time. If I exactly remember you know 1972 you know uh, limits to growth, the famous book came into existence followed by you know, mankind and that uh, uh, turning point. So, limits to growth was more, you know, uh, pessimistic, but you know, the later on we realized we have a huge resources and it is possible for us to support uh, a more population in our world because we have a large grazing areas. 
not we are not able to use the we have a long coastal lines several coastal resources we are not able to use so conservation study disaster management was also the important approaches to rural development you know it is particularly you see the structural adjustment and the market liberalization came into existence uh, they started economic reforms re-regulation, liberalization, fiscal uh, discipline were you know in force in many part of the world in order to achieve the economic growth and development. Shrinking state and rise of international development you know role of NGOs you know the community groups they started coming into uh, in this area. It is you know initial emphasis was also on participatory research methods, rapid rural uh, appraisal you know a strategy in order to understand the rural realities this and so that is why this you can find here the shift in the whole qualitative and participatory research methods and increasing awareness about about the value of indigenous technical knowledge focus of understanding the functioning of existing farming system intervention to promote drought was you know became a very very important area it is a tragedy for our country that you know himalaya may be considered if you will consider the per unit availability of water himalaya you know received a very high but more than 150 districts are classified as a drought prone districts 1990 a structural era of a structural adjustment but again you know they realized that without good governance it is not possible and so the rule of law, public sector management, control of corruption and reduction of uh, military spending these are the important issues came into existence you know uh, and improving government through the institutional socio-economic activity uh, was in, uh, in force in many part. Here I would like to uh, uh, put before you the one model presented by Digital India, eight elements of the good governance, you know, it should be participatory, consensus oriented, account uh, accountable, transparent, responsive, effective and efficient, then equitable and uh, inclusive and follow the rule of law. These are the important, you know, principle of uh, good governance. So, 1990, you know, poverty reduction, we moved towards poverty reduction, many World Bank program came into existence, IMF, International Monetary Fund also provided uh, several means for enhancing the coordination of development assistance in different part of the world. Participatory rural appraisal method was adopted, emphasis, uh, giving emphasis on uh, uh, providing option to the rural people, minimizing the risk, adopting practices and seek information. There was increasing recognition of local knowledge and agency through the process of participatory research and planning. Here I would like to quote from Robert Chambers. He was a very, very instrumental for bringing rural, you know, um, uh, development as a discipline. 1990, Hector oriented rural development, environment and sustainability, environmental accounting, participation was ensured, empowerment of local and empowering the local, you know, several schemes were uh, brought by uh, our policy makers in order to involve the people and empowering the people and particularly I would like to use the word women, empowerment of women. You know, here I would like to mention also the reservation of uh, women in the local in panchayats, local decision making like a panchayats or the municipal government, it was a very very important step taken by the uh, for participatory democracy, you know moving towards the participatory uh, democracy. You know uh, dear colleague I would like to tell you that the 2000 we moved towards the sustainable life. DIFD brought several initiatives, schooners, you know, I would like to quote here, diversity is the watch word and livelihoods approaches have challenged fundamentally single sector approaches to solving complex rural development problems. And 
also the millennium development goals, country ownership and good governance. You know, millennium development in 2008, 2015 as the target date for achieving most of the millennium goals, which aims to halve the extreme poverty in all its part. But still, I am very sorry to say that we are not able to in many countries. But you can see the many initiatives taken. Here, I would like to put before you some of the important example of a Kangra district, Himachal Pradesh, agricultural cooperatives, you know, a public schools all how this household population, the weaker section of society, they are participating in the, uh, uh, you know, decision making. The uh, cultivated, cultivation is a very, very important area. Here in a livelihood strategy, you know, uh, uh, for that they identified like a farmer, service, shopkeeper, business, handicraft, teacher, daily wager community worker, agricultural laborers, all different type of the livelihood strategy were adopted in Himachal Pradesh. Here you can see the rural livelihood options available to a people. It is very important for us to improve entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, a skill development. You know, here I would like to mention the very important program started by uh, uh, our present government under leadership of uh, PM Modi, a skill India. A skill India is not only for the make in India, but also to for improving the rural India. How we can improve the entrepreneurship, local level uh, resources, material, talents should be, you know, linked with this whole for uh, creating the several livelihood option to the people living in a different part, livestock, best, uh, this is considered as a backbone of rural economy. You can see this the, uh, 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 for milk or for meat or variety of such production, it is very, very important to strengthen the livestock economy. Decentralization came into Panchayati Raj program, principle of subsidiary democratic decentralization came into existence. And so, sector-wide development, con country ownership, the appearance of sector-wide approaches is closely linked with recent shift of the donors. Social protection program, poverty eradication, you know, continues to be the very, very important, you know, managing risk and vulnerability. I would like to quote here, enable the very poor to share in the benefit of economic growth, since many will not be rich by trickle down. So, Millennium Summit and Millennium Development Goals came into existence. You see, it is very important for us to priority sectors, sections like old age people here. You see this in the rural area. Old age people need a social security measure. In many developing countries, we do not have social security measure. ICT for development, climate change, fair trade, you know, now the governance, even ICT based the governance has become a very, very important instrument of decision makings, you know, focusing on the price information, market access, challenges to uh, 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 climate change. You see the typical local market. These markets are considered as a very important center of innovation. You know, people come from rural area, they get new type of innovation, they go back to the villages, they adopt such innovation. So, these are playing a very, very important role. You see, the one very important technique we adopted for the uh, SWAT tool for food security analysis in rural area, you know, a, a strength, you know, for food security, what are the strength? Good quantum of rainfall, very important, good road connectivity, fisheries, diversification, medicinal plants, art and craft, weakness, uneven distribution of rainfall low level of market surplus, lack of knowledge, poor water holding capacity, opportunity, huge demand for milk and eggs, incentive for establishment, you know, threat, threat like environmental factors, you know, soil erosion, no big market, these are the very, very important. Finally, I would like to, dear viewers, I would like to tell that we just implemented the sustainable uh, development goals 
and can this sustainable development goal can play these 17 items can play very important for rural development in different part of the country by uh, Im improving poverty, no hunger, good health, quality education, reduce inequality, you know peace and justice, partnership for goals. Finally, I can tell you we need democracy, development and peace for rural development. Thank you. Thank you so much sir for such insightful and comprehensive lectures. Dear friends, as you know we had a lecture on rural development in respect of word and I would like to tell you that we will be having lecture on rural development itself in respect of India in our next, next lecture with Professor Singh. So keep watching, stay tuned and with this note I would like to thank you sir for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.